In this exercise, we're going to use a photo that we download from the internet, make some color modifications, and then add some typography, as you see here in this layout. Now this is much more typical of the type of work that you would be doing in Photoshop. In our last exercise, we created a couple of shapes, but really that is Illustrator's strength. And I would recommend that if you're going to create graphic shapes like that, that you use Illustrator. But for layouts like this, using photography, then Photoshop is definitely the best way to work. Now the first thing we need to think about when we're working with Photoshop is where we are going to source our photography from. We could take the photographs ourselves, but unless we're trained photographers, I would recommend that you source your photography from professional photographers. And of course, unless your budget allows for professional photographers, you'll probably have to rely on some stock photography websites. Some of these sites require pay for a yearly subscription. But let's talk about other ways of sourcing our photography. I'm going to open up my browser. Let me bring us back to the idea refinery. I have a post here called Ethically Sourced Imagery for Composite Illustrations. Now, we're not necessarily doing a composite illustration here, but in this post, if I scroll down, I have a number of links to websites that allow you to work with royalty-free imagery, meaning that there's no copyright restrictions. The one I would like you to open up for this exercise is this one here called Pexels. Now, Pexels, as the title across the top tells you, is the world's first exclusively free stock photo and video library. There are some license restrictions. If you come here to the license section, you can scroll down and see just what you can and cannot do, but there really is very little restrictions here. What I would like you to do is in this search field, type in vegetables and press return. Now, all of these photographs are professionally sourced. The quality is very high. Not only is the quality very high, but so is the image resolution. Here is the one that we're going to be working with right here. If I click on that, that brings me to a page that allows me to download that. You can see I do have a link to the photographer, and if I want to contribute, I can click on the Donate button. I'm just going to click here for Free Download. When I click Download, that will put my photo into my Downloads folder. I'm going to come back to Photoshop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that photo by coming to the File drop-down menu and selecting Open. I'm going to navigate to the image that I've just downloaded and say Open. Now, before we proceed any further, let's talk about the biggest issue when we're working with Photoshop, and that is image resolution. This is something we did not have to worry about in Illustrator. Remember, Illustrator's vector paths allowed it to be scaled to any size without any degradation in resolution. But for Photoshop, the images are made up of tiny little pixels. I'm going to zoom in by pressing Command plus sign to reveal the individual pixels of this photo. And as you can see, I have to zoom in quite a ways before I can reveal the individual pixels of this photo. You can see them outlined here in this picture. That tells me that this image is very high resolution. It's the number of these pixels within an image that determine its resolution. The number of pixels in an image is called its pixel density. I'm going to press Command-0 on my keyboard to zoom back out. The key to working with Photoshop is making sure that the photographic imagery that we are using has the appropriate resolution for the task that we want to achieve. For example, if we are working with imagery that is only ever going to be seen online, on a screen, then we don't have to have as high resolution for our imagery. However, if we are going to be creating a project that is meant to be printed on an offset printer, then we want as much resolution as possible. Let's look at the image resolution for this photo. I'm going to come to the Image drop-down menu, and I'm going to select Image Size. Now you can see here this image is rather large. Its longest measurement is over 5,000 pixels. When you consider that a 4K television is only 4,000 pixels, you can see that this image would look crisp and clear on a 4K screen. That is very high resolution indeed. In fact, this value here, the pixel dimension, is probably the most important bit of information for this photo. But underneath that, we have some other options. For example, we currently see the width and the height. But these values for width and height are variable. They depend on the resolution. And currently, you can see our resolution is set to 72 pixels per inch. Now, 72 pixels per inch is the resolution for objects that will be seen on a screen. However, as I mentioned earlier, if we were going to be printing this image out using an offset printer, then we are going to want to have higher resolution than this. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to 
uncheck this Resample checkbox. We'll talk about what Resample does in just a moment. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the resolution value from 72 to something much higher. If we're doing offset printing, then we would want to have at least 266 as our value. And look what happens to our width and height values now that I've changed the resolution. It's become a much smaller image. What that is telling me is that I can use this image up to 20 inches in height as a printed object. Well, that's actually pretty good. I could create a poster out of that. But often we'll find that often printers like you to set your resolution to something even higher. I'm going to set this to 300, which is another common resolution value. And now you can see that my image has become slightly smaller. Meaning again, if I print out this image at this resolution, the largest poster I can produce is just over 17 inches tall. Still, that is pretty good for a poster. And this is why I say we have to understand the image resolution of the imagery that we're working with, as well as the task that we want to achieve in order to determine whether an image has the correct resolution or not. For example, what if 17 inches wasn't large enough? What if I had to produce a 24 inch poster, for example? Does that mean that I can't use this image? Well, no, not technically. There is something we can do. We could do something called resampling this photograph. What that does is Photoshop will add in extra pixels into your image to make this image large enough at the proper resolution. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to create a poster that's 300 pixels per inch resolution, but that is 24 inches in height. What I would need to do is come over here and click on Resample, and then I'm going to type in a new value here for height. But when I do, Photoshop is going to use this particular algorithm, Preserve Details 2.0, to fit in extra pixels. And you can see what's happened here. My image has now become a little bit larger. It still has the same resolution, and it now has this new larger dimension for height. What's happened, though, if I zoom into my image, is Photoshop has filled in the new pixels while trying to preserve the details of the original photograph. It's done a pretty good job. In fact, the later versions of Photoshop have done a really good job with this algorithm. It's not perfect. Our image is now slightly blurrier than it was, but it's not bad. Now, we don't want to do this image enlargement too much. Eventually, there comes a point where our image will degrade to a point where it becomes noticeable. But for this application, this is not bad. The real takeaway here is that whenever you work with a photograph, make sure you open it up in image size and check the pixel dimensions and the resolution and make sure that it'll work for the task that you're trying to achieve. I'm just going to press cancel here. I'm not going to apply any of these changes. So I now know that I have a image here that's going to work for any application. Now let's take a quick look at my sample layout here. This is meant to be a menu cover for a restaurant called the Blue Tomato. And as you can see, I've reduced the color to black and white, but I've applied an overlay color over top of the tomato. If I open up the Layers panel to reveal the layers that are achieving this effect, you'll notice that if I turn off these layers above, that we are starting with the original photo. And what I'm doing is I'm adding what are called adjustment layers over top of that original layer. And as I turn them on, one by one, you can see that each one of those layers is doing something slightly different without destroying the original photograph. This is really important in Photoshop, that we preserve the original photograph. It's what we call working non-destructively in Photoshop. Let's come back here, and I'm going to open up the Layers panel. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an adjustment layer from the bottom of this panel. This icon here, the circle with the half black and half white, is our adjustment layer icon and I'm going to click once and hold to reveal the menu of different adjustment layer properties that we can work with. The one that we're going to start with is this one here called black and white. And you can see what's happened. There is a new layer that has been created over top of the background layer, and that new layer is called our black and white layer. Now I can still make changes to some of the properties of this black and white adjustment layer. If I come and click on this image in the layer, and double click that, you can see that I end up with this panel here called properties. What this allows me to do is choose the different flavor of black and white that I want to work with. Now you can click on this preset here, play around with some of these others. I'm just gonna leave it at the default. I'm gonna close that properties panel. 
The next thing I want to do is adjust the amount of contrast in this photograph. The way we do that in Photoshop is playing with something called the levels. And again, we're going to do that using an adjustment layer. I'm going to come back again to the bottom of the Layers panel and click once on this Adjustment Layers icon. And I'm going to choose, in this case, Levels. Another layer has been created above the previous black and white layer. The way these adjustment layers work is they work on all the layers underneath them. And for me to make some adjustments to this Levels adjustment layer, I'm going to double click this icon right here. And again, that opens up this properties panel. What we're seeing here in this levels panel is the histogram, the distribution of light to dark pixels throughout this image. We looked at this a little bit earlier when we were doing our texture photo adjustments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to accentuate the dark pixels of this photograph by taking this dark slider on the left and dragging it towards the center just a little bit, not too much. And you can see that's made the overall image darker. But I'm going to take this middle slider that represent the mid value pixels and I'm going to drag that a little bit to the left towards the dark slider. And you can see what's happened here. Our dark pixels are now fitting into a smaller range. This increases our contrast, which is exactly what I was looking for. The next thing that we're going to do is add the blue color to our tomato. And again, we're going to do that using an adjustment layer, but I want to restrict this effect to just this tomato. So before I apply that effect, I'm going to make a selection. I'm going to zoom in using my zoom tool so I can see this just a little bit better. Click on it a couple of times. And I'm going to make a selection of this tomato by using my quick selection tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm working on the correct, that I have the background layer selected. And with that background layer selected, I'm going to just drag this quick selection tool over top of the tomato like that. Once I have that tomato selected, I'm going to press Command-0 to zoom out. And again, I'm going to come to my Layers panel, and I'm going to click once on this Adjustment Layer icon. And from this menu, I'm going to choose Solid Color. From this color picker, I'm going to make sure that I choose a nice blue. I'm going to say OK. Of course, you'll recognize right away that this doesn't look blue. But remember how I said Adjustment Layers work. An adjustment layer applies its effect to all the layers beneath it. Currently, my color fill layer is underneath my black and white layer. That's why this image looks black and white. But if I take this layer and click and drag it above all the other layers, you can see I now have this blue color just over top of the tomato. But I need to be able to see through this color to the tomato below. But I can do that by changing the blend mode. Here in the layers panel, I'm going to click where it says normal. And you can see there are the, the different types of blending modes that I can choose from. As I hover over top of them, you can see that they all have a slightly different look to them. The one that I ended up using was this one here called Overlay. I'm just going to select that. I now have the image looking the way I want. The final thing we're going to do is add a little bit of type. Over here in our toolbox, you can see we have our Type tool. I'm just going to click on that. And I'm just going to click right about here next to that tomato. To see this better, I'm just going to use my zoom tool, click on that, and zoom into my word. Now, just like in Illustrator, to make modifications to this word, I'm going to click on my type tool, and I'm select my word by clicking once, twice, three times. The name of this restaurant is the Blue Tomato. I'm going to press caps lock on my keyboard to make all the type capitals. With that typed out, again, I'm going to click once, twice, three times to select all those letter forms. And let's make some changes here in the color. I'm just going to click once on that color swatch to bring up my color picker. And I'm going to choose white in the top left corner of my color cube here. And I'm going to say OK. I'm also going to change the size of the type by clicking my font size. And I'm going to choose something larger. That's still not large enough. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my Move tool from my toolbox, and you can see that this shape has a bounding box around it similar to what we saw in Illustrator. In fact, if I click and drag on that type, I can increase it that way. Now, in the latest version of Photoshop, they've made a change to the way we scale items. It used to be that we always had to hold down the Shift button in order to maintain the aspect ratio so that we didn't distort it. But in the latest version, you don't have to do that. It automatically keeps its aspect ratio 
when you click on those bounding box anchor points and resize it. If you were to hold down the shift button, like we used to have to do, then we can distort it like this. Of course, that's not what we want to do. I'm going to press Command Z to undo that. Let's finish this off by positioning my type over top of that little bit of garlic. I'm going to come over here to my toolbox and click on the hand tool to move that back into my screen. I'm going to change the color of blue here by clicking once in that blue and then twice to select that word. And I'm going to change the color by coming to the color swatch in the control panel again. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to sample some of the blue pixels from this tomato. You can see here that with this color picker open, if I hover over top of some of these other elements, I get this little crosshairs that allows me to choose blue. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to hit Command 0 on my keyboard to zoom out. I'll let you play with the type. You can choose a slightly smaller type. As you can see, I've done something a little bit different with this example. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how to submit this exercise. Because we're working with some rather large photographic images, these Photoshop file sizes can get a little bit large. So I don't want you to submit your Photoshop file. What I would like you to do is to export a JPEG version of this layout. And the way we do that is by coming to the File drop-down menu and selecting Export and choosing Export As. From this window, you can see that we can choose the format that we want to work with. I would like you to export this as a JPEG, but you can see we have some other options here. In the image size, I'd like you to make this smaller. In fact, we can just come here to where it says Scale and click on this Disclosure Triangle. And I'm going to get you to make this much smaller, 25%. And I'm going to select Export All. Now you can put your name on it and select Save. You now have an exported JPEG file appropriate for sending to a client for approval or a teacher for an exercise submission.